Hi, Sportster Paul here. We're doing Bobcad Cam for SolidWorks. As fast as we can do this test part, my buddy Dave Rui, mechanical engineer, industrial designer, machinist, jack of all trades, designed to trip up cam programs. I've done it in all these different programs. Let's see how fast we can do it in Bobcad. So up to SolidWorks. We're starting with the part uh, read only. I'll put this on the website. So the first thing I want to do is save as, where's that? Save as, save as a copy, and save it as this Bobcam fast as I can save. Yeah, I know it exists, overwrite it. Dave's part was 2019, my SolidWorks 2020, demo mode, okay. So it's thinking for a while. What about that original? Close that, and then I, I never trust it. Okay, so the part we're working on, but fast as we can. Got to stretch this out a little bit so you can see the Bobcad stuff. There's the cam tree. Here's an art manager. I think that's for carving raster kind of images and doing stuff, eagles and wooden things. This is posting, so we're not going to worry about that today. Go over here. You got right click, new job, milling. All this is correct. Solid body. What are you milling? That easy enough. Workpiece, it knows the workpiece. Stock, stock wizard. Um, let's see, enter, because unlike SolidWorks Cam by CamWorks, this lets you put in the overall size, which is the way you order stock. So there's a little trick here. What is going on? I must have accidentally hit something. So we want 1.5. So now you can hold it in the vise, but I want some meat on the top. So let's go down here. And what's going to be offset doesn't offset the stock itself. It offsets how much stock you have. So positive Z, if we add a tenth here, you'll watch. The bottom doesn't move, but at the top jumps up. So now it's 1.6 inches. So you got to go back up here after a lot of trouble and figure out. Okay, so now it's truly 1.5. Uh, what else? We got to get the... I like having the orientation, the machine orientation here. I think that is origin. We don't matter. I believe if we just go, no, here, X direction. There we go. So now it's the way it's going to be in the vise like this, fixed jaw, movable jaw, positive X to the right in my machine, positive Y to the back, Z is up, stock is good. It thinks for a bit. It does this. Go here. You edit. They give you a nice selection, aluminum. It is rot 6061. Here it is. T6 heat treat. Okay. So that's done. Machine setup. They, they, double clicking or, or hovering doesn't work. You got to right click always. So this will be the top. I don't want to hurry too much. Top setup. There's no fixture. I'm not going to show a vice. We had a show about how to do that. So now we're ready to. Oh, no, 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 no. The setup isn't set up yet. Edit. Arrows reminded me. Pick the origin, and unlike SolidWorks Cam, it just lets you go there. We want to reverse the Y at the very least. Oh, and now it does that. So now we want to reverse. I said Y. I meant X. Now let's try the Y, and that got it. There is, the person did it was colorblind because these colors aren't the same as these colors, but it's close. So that's that. Now we've got our part zero correct. We're going to find this top corner of the stock with edge finders and excuse me, be off and running. So, mill facing. Select geometry. Oh, no, don't select any geometry. This will be face aware. And then I'm getting in the habit of doing this next. Top, zero, true. Bottom, tenth of an inch deep. That's not the bottom, that's depth. Tenth of an inch deep. All these programs do everything a little different. This is, see, I thought I was selecting an operation in that menu. You're not, you're selecting a group of things, which could be a tapped hole with tap drill and center drill and all that. This one there, it does have only one operation facing this group. So then you can go next, work offset one. Oh, we're going to have to change that. That reminds me of something. I want, I don't want this drill. I want, what do we got to do? Add from tool library, quarter inch flat end mill. Okay. Uh, I want two flutes, but I think you go back here, you say two flutes. It has to be long enough to get down in that pocket without the flutes rubbing against the side, which makes the overall three. And you say 
Next, now let's go back and see what happened in our tool crib. Here's the for flute. Will it let us delete? Sometimes it lets me delete. Yeah, so now we have one tool with tool number one. I've had the most trouble with this, trying to get it to act the way I want. Operator error, obviously, but still. Adaptive. This is the swoopy tool pass. So don't put a lot of tool loads on. 50% step over. Climb milling. Yes. Next. Parameters. No bottom allowance. Go right down to true. Just one step's fine because there's only a tenth of an inch of meat. I think we can compute over here. You might not see that, but and there it is. Beautiful. So now here you got to right click and say you can't see it. Rename and say face top. Enter. Then there's no need to look at those tool paths, so let's blank tool paths. Can't say hide and unhide, they use the word blank. Okay, now we're going to do the perimeter around the part. Insert two axis operation. Select the geometry. Pretty basic. I'll try to do it the way Mastercam would want you to get the direction of the cut, but it doesn't seem to matter or work here. I'm always changing it. But I've learned, so I know more than when I did the first impressions. Here, let's see. Um, I want to go a little deeper than an inch. inch. The part's an inch tall, but I want to go 1.02. So I overcut it a little. So when I flip it around, there's not a sharp edge. Okay, so I think that we're all set. Uh, we don't want to profile finish. So take that off. We just want to profile rough. We want to go tab. We don't care about tabs. We don't care about posting. Rough, it's got our one tool. So that's thankfully. We want to side rough, step over, step over point, no, step over point one, two, five. And that works out. Oh, here's a mistake. So we'll, we'll get there in a minute. Parameters, side allowance, see, because it was a roughing. That I don't want to do rough finish. Everybody does, but I don't. Uh, we're going down multiple steps. Uh, even I want to go down 125, eighth of an inch down. I found if you go here and back, then there's nine cuts. Compute, it's on the wrong side. And I had the most trouble. Okay, do I not climb mill? Now you go here, and it shows you the little arrowhead there, and then say reverse. And now go back up here and say compute tool paths. And now they're where you want. And we had to do two. Oh, we can blank the stock so you can see better. Blank the stock. And I had to do that step over to get the corners of the stock here and here. And it makes the cuts a little less. Then the other thing I meant to show you, what is it? Tools. Got to use a little arrow in SolidWorks. Savage. Go options. Document property. Units. Here. Four units, like all machinists, like four units, okay. And then we're back here. Okay. Feature two axis, right click, rename, perimeter. And I think, how are we doing? Eight minutes, all right. Perimeter. Hit enter. Well, I don't know why the little box, okay, now it's healed. So, perimeter. Blank. Good. Jumps out. We didn't mean to expand that. Now we want to do the pocket. Insert. There's no pocket here. You know, this is where I'd like to see pocket chamfer, but every program does it different. Select geometry. Highlight the line. Right click. Select tangency. This is a SOLIDWORKS function. Select tangency. Fill in the two missing ones. Here. Here it's a little trickier because there's a tiny little one there. And then this one and then this one. So off you go. Say, OK, the geometry is right. Go next. Uh, feature. This is going to be top is right, but the bottom is not because it thinks it's going to this flat, but it's actually going down all the way here. Let's give it some sympathy because it can't be. OK. 6 to 5, I happen to know that's right. Next, the strategy. We don't want to finish. We just want to rough. Tabs, we don't care. Posting, we'll care. Rough, it's got our one end mill. See, and they have rough. We want to do... Oh, wait a minute. We did something wrong. <laughs> previous, previous, previous machining strategy. We don't want a profile rough. Erase that. We want a pocket. 
and we don't want to finish after the profile, we just pocket it, right? Let's see how it looks when it's done. The surface finish won't be as nice. So now we go next, next. I'm actually getting to like this next business just because it's more, you, you get an idea. Offset pocket, there's no way, I didn't see adaptive here, which is a shame. Visual Mill will do adaptive. Use spiral, no, we don't care. Climb, that's good to know. It's actually letting us, there's no side allowance because I picked a rough, you know, wants to do no allowance. Multiple steps. I don't want to go heavy. I want to go 125 because I got this router style mill. If I go here and here, it should show five cuts. Next. Uh, let's spiral into it. Accept their defaults. All this stuff, we're okay. Do compute. There they are. Wonderful. Feature 5 axis, rename. This is deep pocket. Enter. This is, oops, this is blank on blank. Okay. Should I, you know, I did a copy of this one and then tried to adapt it. It was more work than it's worth. You know, I, I prefer just to be explicit. You might think this is dragging things out. I don't think it is. Select geometry. And this is the biggest time thing. This is so brilliant. This is what my buddy, let me got to get out of here. What's going on? Well, I guess we got to keep this lit up because the previous operation, I haven't figured out how to unlight it. Same thing. Go here, select tangency, and start getting these other ones. At least we're down now. Get this little fella. Oops, unpick it. Pick it twice and it goes away. That's a SolidWorks function. Here. And now watch this. This is what my buddy Dave taught me. Go here, you go down. You go over. Oops, don't pick the face. You go over this little guy right. No, not that face. Gosh almighty. This guy. And go up. Go around. Not the face. Boy, I'm having I'm rushing and I'm making more mistakes. Let's slow down. My mentor used to talk about a professional's tempo. Rushing doesn't get you anything. Okay, now go down. Go over right here and then go up and you're done. Then next, oh, we got to pick the top. This one you could see it easy to get it confused. This, this is where it needs some help. That's the top. Pick the bottom, might there. That's right, 125. I happen to know from making this part 10 different programs. Strategy, it's not, these aren't profiles. See, this is where I'm not too keen about stuff, and I don't want to do a finish on this. So do next. Tabs we don't care about. Posting we don't care about. Rough, it's our one quarter inch, two flute, 1.2 inch flute length. Uh, standard pocket. Oh, I've been doing standard pockets. Well, we'll just do standard, right? Life's okay. Allowance, because it was a roughing, you know, it had this allowance. We take that off. Uh, multiple steps, let's just do two, and it's got that all figured out for us. Let's spiral in, and let's compute. There we are, right? There's a spiral in. You can see that it's gone in here. You can see that the corners, unlike visual mill, you got to tell it in an advanced parameter. You want arc, you know, precise arcs. This one does it, because all the, the diameters that Dave used here are 0.26, because he knows it's not good to run a tool hard into a corner. So, okay, now, Bobcat has been very stable, even on my old Windows 7 operating system, but I did crash in my fixture show, this last show I did. <sighs> Rename. This is shallow pocket blank. Where is that blank? Okay, now, this was... Solid cam, you could actually go geometry point to point. We, we're trying to do this flat here. Most of the other programs, you're stuck with a sketch. Light this up. Hit the sketch icon. Hit the line icon. Draw a line from there. See it? To there. Oop. Ah. Control Z. Draw a line from there. 
Come on. To there. See, I think I missed it again. Gosh almighty. Control Z. I'm getting frustrated. See, this is hurrying. This is what trying to rush does. 15 minutes in. There. Get within a micro in inch of this thing. Come on, light up the dot. There we go. Finally got it. Say what? Say select. Say select. There's our line. It's fully constrained. Life is good. Get out of the sketch. Go here and, oh, you can, you don't have to right click. See, this is why Bobcat's kind of a funny fit. Then you go back into SolidWorks and it's different. Um, cam, you want to tell yourself it's cam, flat, kludge. And it's shad that it clutters up your part tree. See, but you could do this in a single part assembly and then you wouldn't have your part tree cluttered up. And then what else? Hide this. I don't want to look at it. You'll see how this all works out. It asks, hey, you know, should you, are they unvalid? I know we didn't do anything to anything we've done. So I've just been saying no. I think you get away with that in this case. All right. So we did the shallow pocket. We want to do the flats now. Insert mill two axis. Select geometry. You go here. There it is. Cam flat kludge. Go f next. Um... Top of feature is not zero. It's minus one if I'm right, right? Isn't it? Here. Minus one. And then the bottom. And if it's not smart enough, it's smart enough now. There. Um, extension. This actually makes me feel a little better. Just putting a little extension on these profiles. It's really nice that had that. Go next. Uh, we don't want to do a profile rough. We just want to, uh, we don't want to do a profile finish. Sorry, I'm screwing up so much. Next, tabs we don't care about, posts we don't care about. Rough, it's the right end mill. Patterns, we want to do side roughing. We got to tell it step over. We want to tell it to do a, what, 0.125 step over and make nine passes. It's going to go over. That might be a little too much. Zig, left, direct. I think we're all okay here. Parameters, don't leave an allowance. I'm learning all the ways I screw myself up by not doing things the classic. Well, you got to do a rough and a finish. Single step. No, let's go down. Um, 0.125. So it's going to do three, except it's corrected. That's why I went four decimal places. You can get a better idea what it's doing to you. Leads, I don't think any of this matters. Vertical. Okay, so say compute. Notice they're on the wrong side. And then I you say, well, don't climb. Conventional. No, it's kind of tricky. You go default chain start point and say reverse direction. You see the purple plobs are going to change. Now they're pointing so it'll climb mill. You can go up here and say compute all tool paths. Now they're on the right side. And they do go a little far, but let's leave that for the next person. This is the flat. And we do what? Blank on blank tool paths. Now we're going to do the slope. This is a three axis. <sighs> Select geometry. This guy. And this guy say okay go next um, this it's it's got to be smart enough to do this you don't do either of these I found the one that worked the best was advanced planer right here push that over I guess you could pick it up here and it'll just appear right away I'm still getting used to all the different ways posting we don't care about rough it's our same end mill see I was using a ball mill going across watch how smart Dave is uh, let's not do zigzag. And the lace angle isn't 90, it's 0. Next, the step over, really fine, right? We want these surfaces to be perfect. So a, a hundredth of an inch. Tolerances, we'll figure out the math. It's smart enough. Plunge, I think this was okay. Lead-ins, here's where options, 3D extents. Otherwise, it stops the tool short, the way visual mill does. In Visual Mill, I had to make sketches. This one has this 3D extents thing. You go next. I think that's it. Compute. It thinks a while. And there they are. Right? And it kind of does up here, and it's going to come down, but it doesn't. And it's going down. It's, it's just such a smart thing. 
We are running later. It's already 20 minutes. Solid cam we did in 23. I don't know if we can uh, rename slopes. Enter. Blank. Okay. Now we do, I guess you got to go all the way to milling job and do new setup. Add setup. And it just appears, right? And then the rename, this is bottom setup. And then you've got to edit it. I'm going to have this in the vise like this for the bottom. So the open part's still off to the right, but pick origin. Now, the origin can't be on the stock, you know, what's left of the stock up here, because the different stock thicknesses will change your part thickness. It's got to be there. Let's see, reverse X. And we got away with it this time. So Y is towards the back. Fixed jaw here, movable jaw here. Bottom setup is done. It's right. Okay, so mill facing. 21 minutes. Don't select anything. All the programs seem to work like this. Now it's stock aware. Clearance plane, top of feature. It's got all that right. I'm learning how, you know, everyone does it a little different. Um, it's got the same end mill. We're going to do adaptive parameters. Oh, multiple steps. Uh, instead of, we'll make them really fine steps. Come on, here, here. Tenth of an inch, because I know there's four tenths of meat on the bottom. I think that's it. Compute. 21 minutes and 48 seconds. A little better because we had that lead in. So there they are. Right? And because it's adaptive, it's getting the corners. Because we didn't select the face as that's what we want to face, it knows enough to go out and do the stock on the edges. And rename face bottom, enter, and right click and blank. Okay, there we go. Now, this is where I kind of like Bobcad. You say insert mill tap hole. Select geometry. I've learned don't select the face and don't select the sidewalls of the holes because then it has depth information and starts splitting them up because this part was made by Dave Rui to confuse cam programs. And it's been doing a great job. So just select the edges. Unfortunately, unlike SolidWorks cam, you know, there, the way you pick them, here, uh, the depth, see, it wants to go all the way through. So I say, no, it's not a through hole. And these are 0 0.38, which is what Dave did if you look in the SolidWorks. It knows it's a quarter 20. I mean, it's helping you a lot of ways. So select geometry. I guess we go next. Okay. So here it is. Center drill, drill. It wants to do a chamfer and a tap. So it's done all these things based on us asking for a tap. So we go here. Here, I don't want to chamfer, you know, because the other programs I didn't chamfer. So let's be fair. Uh, next, next, next. Center drill is a 0.43. I don't like that. Add from here. I want a quarter inch. Where is it? Here. I want this guy because that's the same collet. I won't have to change the collet in my machine. Uh, I wish I could change the tool. Use automatic tool numbering. Okay. Tool number two. Oh, it fixed it. Okay. Then that was the, the tool. Now we go one more. See there, it, they've simplified things the way I like. Uh, the depth, to me, 80 thousandths, that's not enough. I found 0.2 because I want, I want it to actually bury up here a little bit. So maybe too deep. That's all trivial stuff, right? Now here's the drill. It knows the right 201 drill. It's got that. Parameters. By saying, use cutting conditions, it's saying, oh, okay. And this is the only program that agrees with SolidWorks, where 0.38 in SolidWorks hole means where the corner of the, you know, before the cone starts for the tip of the drill. The tip of the drill goes 0.4408. All the other programs I've had to figure out with trial and error to say the depth is 0.44. And then the, the, the corner here works out to be 3.8 down. Uh, we're drilling, so let's do a peck. All that, we'll, we'll trust them to know what they're doing. Here's the tap, a quarter 20, cutting tap, all that all that's cool. Here I said, no, um, how did this work out? 0.38, I think I said 0.37, just to make a point, right? 
because you don't want to run this tap into the where the drill cone starts you'll break the tap but the nice thing about SolidWorks Cam is they model the taper at the beginning of the tap and you can you can adjust that. I think we say compute. There they are. So 25 minutes and 18 seconds. We'll call it 25 because we diddled around a bit. Let's do rename um, tapped holes. Enter. Let's hide the toolpaths. Blank and blank. So, you know, 25 minutes, a couple minutes longer than I think in, in solid cam, but that's okay. Probably making that sketch. So now to do the simulation, oh, and I didn't change the work offsets. So watch what happens. Say run. Notice table, table, it's crashing into the table. Oh, okay, thanks for telling us. Oh, I closed this, come on. So now what do you do? You go into the appropriate setup, you do edit, you go all the way down, and this is where you move the part up off of the table. I happen to know it's 1.05, one and a tenth extra, so that the bottom of the part is complete. Because remember, our part zero is here in this setup. This setup is pretty close, edit, Let me think. This one, I think I could just move it up a tenth and it got it off the table. So back here, oh, let's do a file save all just in case it uh, crashes on me. Like I say, this kind of stuff is stable. My fixturing episode, I had a lot of trouble. Go to a simulation. It's preparing the simulation. Let's do, well, I'll leave it there pretty fast. Oh, let's take the tool pass off. I constantly, visibility, tool pass. Hit run. Slow it down a little bit. Speed it up a little bit. See, here's, here's coming down. That was so, I was using a ball mill going across. Dave's like, no, 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 you leave the same. This has been, the, this part's designed to be clever about doing that. So we're going to, well, in preparation, we'll get ready for face in the bottom. One of the things I dislike about the simulator is, you know, the buttons work different. The mouse buttons are different. Speed it up. Speed it up. And let's get a little bit closer. It's going to be a half hour. Yeah, longer than solid cam but then again solid cam costs a bit more so then bam bam that's just about as deep as i wanted to go now it's peck drilling peck drilling and if i did if i got that depth right on the tap here's the tap which always shows up as a gouge right if you do verification excess show gouges it shows because the model shows 0.201 tap drill size the cam system uses a quarter inch tap outer diameter and so these all show up as gouges not the end of the world but here's the cool thing if i did it right they model the tap just as a blunt end so this is the depth of the tap where i said 0.37 this is the depth of the drill 0.38 so you could see there's no way you're going to run the tap you, uh, S solid cam lets you dial in the taper of the tap and really push every extra billionth of an inch but here even though it's not color coded the way i like it at least you get you learn to use it and you can see oh okay if the tap goes here but the drill is broken out here and then the nice thing if you kind of look at it it's a little more hogged out because of the thing let's go what are we doing we're getting out of the simulator oh it won't be in the right position anyway let's flip Oh, see, because the simulator uses the left-hand button to rotate stuff around, it's really unacceptable. I mean, that reason alone. And so you can kind of see, you know, that kind of looks, not, now they hogged out to a quarter of an inch, but that looks right, you know, there. And then the breakout here was correct, I can tell you that. So, Bobcad, Bobcad as fast as I can, I'd say, what was it, 25 minutes to get the part done? 
four or five minutes of messing around with the simulator to make sure, which you really should do, right? The simulator is a lifesaver. So we'll see you next time. I think one more Bobcad show 3D stuff because this is a full 3D package demo and uh, they do have great pricing on their 3D compared to Mastercam and SolidCam. So we'll see you next time. Sports to Paul here. Good luck with your cam project. Bye now.